Welcome back to my walkthrough for the consequence my friends. In this walkthrough I'm showing you the location of all the collectibles in the game. And in the previous segment it seems that Ruvik has finally completely taken control over Leslie. At least if you see the way Leslie is behaving right now. And considering he just gained some sort of powers. And even the way he's moving really. He's too far there's no gone. doubt that Ruvik has taken over and him. we have to try and put a stop to it. This section can be a little bit tricky. We'll have to fight a few enemies and things can get a little bit complicated. As soon as you see that haunted turn around and move to the other side, pass to this side. And now as you can see there's an axe there. I still have an axe from the previous segment, but I'm going to use this axe to kill this enemy right here. You don't really need to kill him if you want, you can actually hide yourself in the ventilation shaft, wait for the enemy to turn back around and then you can move on to the other area without killing him. But like I said, I didn't really lose anything because there was another axe there for me to pick up, so it really didn't matter. And I guess we're not getting out of here anytime soon, huh? Answer our questions. What oh, we don't have time for this. What Smash the monitor. The there we go. Let's just keep pursuing Leslie. Or Ruvik, really, it doesn't matter at this point. Poor guy has been taken over. And there he goes. So now we're going to unveil a body on this desk and that will trigger a cutscene. The patients are dying when connected to the machine? What are you implying, Jimenez? After what you did to him, now all of this is just conjecture. But it's as if Ruben's consciousness remains trapped inside Stem, and he's attacking anyone attempting to enter. This is inexcusable. We need to get around this. We can't have come all this way for nothing. Ruvik. Okay, so now we're going to turn around and take the elevator to the floor above. And then we're going to witness another cutscene and then we'll get a collectible, another audio tape. We'll pretty much gather all the remaining collectibles during this segment. But why Leslie? What makes him special? Leslie was not always like this. He became catatonic after a traumatic experience as a child. His family was murdered in front of him. The data would suggest that brainwave synchronization with Ruben correlates to specific trauma. In this case, Ruben's own loss of family. This will not do. We need something else at the core. Something more acceptable to a whole range of people. Okay, well that explains why Leslie was the only one to survive the stem process and why it's compatible with Ruvik. They grow impatient with our progress and demand briefings on the development process. At first stressing the results, but now they work off a timeline based on their needs. Typical bureaucrats. I've been pushing Ruben, but he's retreated further, doing his research at home and refusing to come to the lab unless it's directly working on our STEM prototype. I am feeling uneasy, and no doubt Mobius is looking on us with question. Well, that explains why Jimenez went to Ruvik's mansion to threaten him. We see that scene in the main game. Now, before we move on ahead, very important, there's a snail here. And it's incredibly easy to miss this one. Because you just keep running forward and you wouldn't really look under the desk. Or under the stairs, sorry. So now point your flashlight 
in this direction that will trigger another cutscene. We need someone rational inside STEM. Potentially that person could neutralize Ruben. I mean, Ruvik. With my knowledge of the system, I may be of some... Absolutely not. We can't afford you complicating this any further. We will prepare one of our own. Sending someone inexperienced, we... We can't even be sure they can come back. Then it will need to be someone... Expendable. Expendable. So that's how you see me. And I trusted you. I don't know if that's quite the case yet. I don't know at this point if this is what actually happened or if it's just Ruvik playing mind tricks on Kidman. Both scenarios seem possible here to be honest and I'm not quite sure just which scenario is true. But it would seem really Where stupid for Mobius to send someone that they don't trust and that they think is expendable to get Leslie. It just doesn't really make sense in my opinion. You'd think they would send their top agent to get this job done or something. So I've memorized that pattern I think. <laughs> and we'll get another letter letter scrap here so let me see if i remember the pattern yep so that takes care of that letter scrap number seven one more letter scrap and we'll be able to get the complete letter it's a really creepy letter but we'll leave that for later this happen in chapter 1 of the main campaign when Sebastian escapes the sadist good times but we have to keep moving on it's just a memory anyway See, it just really wouldn't make a lot of sense to me if it was Mobius doing all of these things. I really think it's Ruvik acting as Mobius and just messing with Kidman's mind. Because why would they try and stop the only person that, well, can actually get Leslie? So this is the sequence that I'm talking about. It can be a really troublesome sequence. I'm going to run up ahead and the guy heard me. I wanted him to hear me and now I'm going to hide here and wait for him to come and inspect and then I'll use the axe that I've collected before to finish him off. There's an axe in the other room that you can use to kill him. But You see, sometimes when you enter the room the guy turns around, so it's just easier to make sure you catch his attention and that he comes out of the room to, to inspect the area and then when he turns around you can finish him off. That makes your life a little bit easier. But that wasn't the hardest part, the hardest part is the next sequence in my opinion. We need to shoot that lock to move on to the next area, but there's going to be a bunch of haunted running in to inspect so it's a little bit hard to say for sure what the best method is for this area 
I'm going to hide here and I was lucky because had I taken another second that Haunted would have spotted me but now I'm going to use the bottle that I picked up and throw it into the that side of the room right there and all of them will go and inspect and that leaves a clear path for me you can also hide in the lockers in that room but this method seems to work fairly well even though yes I do admit that it was a close call because had I thrown the bottle a couple of seconds later then that haunted would have turned around the corner and he might have seen me and that would make my life a lot more complicated but it worked nonetheless and we get to keep a weapon for once so let's just turn around here and now this next section can also be a little bit tricky but Really the key here is to run instead of staying behind and fight all the enemies. Just have your shotgun prepared. And as you jump down there's going to be enemies who appear but we're not going to wait for them to get out of the pool of blood. Instead we're going to shoot this guy right here. Pick up the bullet that he drops and now we're going to run down. And this part is the one that can be a little bit tricky. You have to wait for this guy to start moving before you shoot him. Otherwise, more often than not, you'll shoot him and it won't do anything to him. I don't know why this happens, but that guy, it's like he lags or something. And if you shoot him while he's still getting up, he won't die. And as you attempt to recharge your weapon, that gives him enough time to grab you and damage you. And since you were inside that pool, Kidman moves even slower than she usually does. So you might have a few problems with this section, but I would recommend that like just like I did, you wait for the guy to actually move towards you, shoot him, and then move to this area to make a final stand of sorts. And if you do this, you shouldn't have too many problems. Don't worry about that guy bashing against the gate, but do be careful with this chimera, immediately shoot it just as the door opens and you'll have just enough time to put another bullet in your weapon and, and shoot it a second time ensuring that it dies. Oh you're still alive, annoying little thing, there we go. And here's another collectible another soundtrack so let's pick that one up as well but yeah this method seems to work fairly well like I said with the chimera you can't wait at all I don't recommend that you shoot it once and then run away and then try and shoot it again because those hands will come after Kidman and as you know Kidman she has pretty much zero stamina and as such, it's better to immediately reload your weapon and shoot again. And if you do this, then you should finish off the Chimera with just enough time to spare. Yes, it's a little bit risky, but it works if your timing is right. Very disappointing, kid. Such a simple mission, but still, you act out. Thankfully for us, there's always a backup plan. Not everything we give you is for your benefit. The infusion. What did you put in me? We needed to know if one of us could survive in the system. But we're not about to risk anyone of value. You were sent to carry us in with you. So here I am. No. It's Rubik. He's making all of this. Yeah, that was my guess that Ruvik was the one behind everything and apparently Kidman believes so as well. But we're going to listen to another audio tape and then I'm going to conclude this segment, my friends. Just be, let me pick up this ammunition and let's listen to the tape. Please, roll up your sleeve. Whoa now! 
That's a big syringe. Don't think you're putting that fucking thing in me. Miss Kidman, you agree to this. Don't forget that. Nothing we're doing is malicious. It's only proper protocol. You know what's proper protocol? Telling the person getting the fucking shot where the hell she is and what's the fucking point. Ow! Damn it! That hurt. Hey guys, what the fuck? Is anyone there? You give me a shot, then just let this weird video play on repeat? Some great fucking medical science you've got going on in here. About damn time. All right, can I go now? Not right now, Miss Kidman. How are you feeling? Any headaches? Nosebleeds, perhaps? What? No. But I do feel a little floaty. Almost like I'm underwater. That's consistent with the effects of the compound. We just have one last part of this test to partake in. Then you will be free to go. Sure. Go for it, I guess. Good. I will now ask you a series of questions. You will answer them while watching the images in front of you. You will not look away from the screen. Do you understand? Yes. Question number one. Have you ever felt abandoned by the ones you trusted? Okay, and that's all the tapes with Kidman's report. Lots of interesting things going on, my friends. The next segment is going to be the last one and I'm looking forward to see how all of this plays out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Take care.